This is the meta one year overview reading for the year of 2024. It's currently December 12th, 2023, 7.06 p.m. Eastern time. Meta at the time of this reading is currently $334.22, that's USD. And the shuffle video that we are going to play for you here in just a moment was created on September 24, 2023 at 10.32 p.m. Eastern time, that's this video here. The overall theme and behavior for Meta in 2024 is a brief peak that's easily missed, a peak that'll stand out on a one-year chart scale minimum, um, and it's a brief peak that's easily missed, followed by a decline through multiple support levels, again, on a scale of a one-year chart. It's crossed, however, with a notable rally that offers opportunity to close out of a long position or and or open up short positions. And so very mixed. 2024, it looks very mixed, like, much, like many of the 2024 readings that I've done thus far, um, multiple highs and lows throughout the year. Before we go any further, I want to make sure everybody's worth The whole purpose of the channel is to transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. We do that by following the rule of karma for the channel. You go to the resources tab of our website, Tarot for Traders, and 5% of the profits from every profitable trade utilizing this information should be donated forward to one of these charities, or pick a charity of your choosing, as long as you're paying 5% forward, and then 5% should be sent back to the channel through one of these links. If you're international, you can use Wise, or you can use YouTube tips, and that leaves you at 90%. Make sure to spend that 90% out of love. As long as you follow those rules, you follow the rule of karma for the channel, the universe considers you an angel investor, is going to send it back to you tenfold for following through. Blessings to all my angel investors. Let's get back into it. Okay, so each cluster of four cards going left to right across the screen represents information about one month out of the year. So you can see they're labeled January, February, March, and so on down here, July, August, September, and so on, right? So the two cards in the middle of each cluster, they represent about each, each card represents about two weeks of time, but not each card's energy is going to line up perfectly with two weeks of time. So you have to take that into account and understand that sometimes, sometimes the timing will be off um, by like plus or minus two weeks. And uh, most of the time it's going to be on point, but it, there will be cases where it's like plus or minus two weeks. So you have to give it a little wiggle room. Um, and make sure that in cases where you do need to give it plus or minus two weeks of wiggle room, just follow the sequence of events as predicted as far as chart behavior, because that will remain accurate even if the timing is off for a little bit at one point throughout the year. Okay, so in January, we have a rally on a multi-day scale into a key resistance on a one-year chart scale that we've done decline from with consecutively lower spikes up on the way down. It's a U-shaped dip uh, for the January low, indicating that we probably have two peaks, two January peaks, um, and we kind of like dip between them, right? The behavior around the January high, we have first sideways rotation along a key support, establishing support, and then a big move higher standing out on a one-year chart scale, followed by sideways rotation along the high. And then the later part of January, we have a decline through multiple support levels. Um, there's also a, a, like a unicursal hexagram energy ta that takes us, that type of sharp drop that takes us into the January low, which my sense is that it's probably on the cusp it's probably on the cusp of uh, january february there's a notable reversal also there's a trade opportunity in early january and then there's a notable reversal in february that'll stand out on a, on a one-year chart scale minimum like when we're looking back at 2024 it'll stand out as a reversal and a uh, prominent trough there in the early part of february looks like we have this move higher a prominent move higher on a multi-day scale to a peak in the early part of uh, February followed by a full retracement of that move, like the halting of a bullish trend mark by sharp decline through key support. It also looks like this is where we have a brief peak that's easily missed here in, in, at the February peak. And then there's a notable decline, like a, one of the biggest declines of, of 2024 for Meta into the January or into the February low, um, which will be in the again in the later part of February. So we go from uh, a low in the early part of February into a peak in er, like early to mid February, followed by another like a sharp drop back into lows. Um, and this this low, I'll talk about where its price level is in relation to the previous one in the paid version. Um, but this this important support level here indicated by the Emperor card is it's important support on a multi-year scale that will be highlighted here in the end of February, probably um, taking us into having something to do with the, the death card in, in March. But this is a significant trough on a one-year chart scale here. Um, a big move to the upside to reach for the March high, which is towards the later part of March, is my sense. Um, we have multiple March lows as well um, in the midst of some mixed back and forth behavior. And some really mixed behavior going on there in, in March, but that universal hexagram energy indicates a, like a sharp drop there as well. And then there's an important trough, like right on the uh, important peak uh, on a one-year chart scale at the end of March, and then an important trough on the cusp of March, April, at an important price level uh, of resistance. It'll be kind of like volume will kind of flatten out in early April around this price level. Um, unexpected move higher to meet the April high, which appears to be towards the later part of April. Behavior around the April low, which appears to be the front cusp. And then in the end of, of April, probably two April lows, um, we have multiple failed attempts to break through key resistance in the later part of April. And the, the April low forms uh, went out of a decline. We have a big move from the bottom of a range all the way to the top of a range. So my sense is that we probably make these lows kind of like going flat around lows early in, early into like mid-April. And then we have this big unexpected move high, higher to reach for the April high, which is towards the very end of April after like the sharp move to the upside. In early May, we have sideways um, crisscrossing back and forth through the same price level. And it'll be a price level that's important on a one-year chart scale. We'll cross up through it, then down through it, then back up through it. And usually when you cross up through it, the third time crossing up through it, it's kind of like a confirmation in a lot of cases, not always, but in a lot of cases, a confirmation of a bullish trend. And so we should see that in the early part of May around a prominent trough on a one-year chart scale. There should be a notable rally into the May high, which my sense is probably hard to say if it's in the beginning or the, the later part of April. I think it's probably in the beginning. Um, and then we have like this failed attempt to break through key resistance on a multi-day scale followed by a decline through key support into the lows of May, which look, appear to be towards the later part of May. But it might be that we have one early, early in May, and then we see it again in, in later May after a rally higher. 
And then there's also a speaker around the mid-May, whatever they're talking about in relation to Meta, it should not be relied upon or trusted. Big move in the later part of, of Meta out of the lows, or in the early part of May out of the lows, big move to the upside, one of the biggest moves to the upside on the one-year chart for 2024, taking us out of prominent chart drops on a one-year chart scale and into a important peak or crest. It'll be like a, like a new local high uh, there in June, a um, notable high on a one-year chart scale, and it'll appear in, in the later part of June when we have uh, erratic behavior back and forth through the same price level in, in the midst of that erratic behavior that will revisit a crest. That was recently a past opportunity, so where that price level is in relation to the others, I'll talk about that in the paid version. Um, guys, if you're interested in the paid version, you know there's a lot of stuff that you get in the paid version that you that you don't get in the public version. I mean, the, the, it's invaluable, obviously invaluable information what you get in the public version when you see the accuracy of these things. Even when it's off a little bit, it, like the rest of the thing is still reliable because it's like it, we have insane accuracy. Nobody even comes close. So the paid version gives you all this information that like most people will never ever have until after the fact, and we have it as much as like a year in, in advance because. We have this system of SMA analysis, and you, my friend, were one of the smart people with an open, open enough mind to actually watch the video rather than just swipe left or whatever the expression is these days. Most people take one look at me and think, "Oh man, this guy's just pulling stuff out, flipping a card, and pulling stuff out of his butthole." You know, like they don't realize that I was a Wall Street broker, that I spent 23 years developing the system. That it's not just tarot; it's a very complex system of esoteric science and extrasensory perception techniques combining. And part of that is the, the prevalent part of, is, of that is tarot. But there's a system within that tarot that we utilize that was never used before, so it's very complicated. In any case what that means is that this is the only place you can find this information we give you the best trades that we see in the, the roughly remember plus or minus two weeks of wiggle room we give you the timing of these trades what to look for as far as entry and exit to help you with that wiggle room um on chart behavior what, what what to look for as far as entry and exit on chart like patterns around those estimated time frames for the trades we tell you what to avoid what to look out for as far as like fake outs and traps and um, we time the highest highs and the lowest lows and give you price level information whatever price level information we're able to extrapolate which is not always the case um sometimes it's like relative price level information sometimes it's actual numbers um and then we also give you the comparative performance of meta in 2024 compared to the s p 500 which one outperforms oh and then we also talk to you about trades on a multi a multi-year standpoint when they're relevant and they're definitely relevant here in 2024 um, we'll talk about where these cross reading congruencies put us on, on the grand scale of things of a 10-year reading um all that guys in the paid version uh it's only it's only 250 like i mean or 249 i mean like it, it we're utilizing information every day on live Every single day online, we're using one-year readings that we we threw down in 2022. Used today, insane accuracy. Still today. So thank you to everybody that, that goes ahead and does that. You guys support the channel. And without people like yourself, we wouldn't be able to accomplish our mission, which is to transmute some of the competitive energy of the stock market into goodwill. With your help, we're creating an army. An army of do-gooders. <laughs> Sounds excellent to me. Let's take a look at the Meta 2023 reading and see how we're doing thus far. We're, I mean, it's December, it's almost over. We, we had a highest high here at the end of the year. And look what we have here at the end of the year. We're going into highest high. So that was pretty sick. We had them in October as well. And you can see that, which is interesting because in a lot of the 2023 readings, we had a lowest low here in October. I don't have it indicated as a lowest low here in October, and it didn't end up being a lowest low in October. There was a there was a drop in October, but we had a highest high in October. Nailed that, guys. Um, the Ace of Swords also indicates a highest high in a lot of cases. That was September, and then I had a highest high for June. It looks like it was July 31st. Oh man, I was off. It was the it was a day off. <laughs> you know, I mean, guys, 20 Meta 2023 was done October 10th, 2022, at 2:06 p.m. Eastern time. That's this that's this file right here that we're, that we're looking at. Right, so we nailed that. We also had a lowest low at the very beginning of the year. We didn't get a lowest low in January, which happens a lot when you have a low at the very, very beginning of a chart. I, I often miss that. But what we did get was the low in March, which was the low, the second lowest. Like after after this move higher out of the low, the next lowest low was this. Boom. So we sort of nailed that. We missed one. We got this one. And then, I mean, as far as trades, August, April, May. So we had this gap there. Well, with all that said, guys, this is a place to take some profits if you're doing like a like a one year chart kind of swing trade or. You could hold it, but I would say probably the end of the year there and then pop back in and we'll talk about where to pop back in in the paid version. But this is an extremely accurate reading. Look, the overall theme was to push the up to, to like a, a really big move higher on a multi-year scale, pushing the upper end of a range higher on a multi-year scale. And look what we did, guys. Right. This was a range right here on a multi-year scale. This was a range here. We pushed all those and we're not done. 2020, 2020 is not over yet or 2023, excuse me, is not over yet. But with that said, guys, go check out the uh, paid version of whatever reading you're interested in. You can do that here on our website, Tarot for Traders, under our services, SO Meta Posts. Scroll down to one-year report, click here to order, specify the year you want the prediction about, and then put in the ticker. In this case, it would be meta, uh, but you could put in any ticker of crypto that you're interested in, just one, um, and 249 for a year's worth of information that nobody else, pretty much, except for the viewers of this channel, will have if they pay for the paid version. They get all that info, and they're the only ones. The only ones, guys. 98% average accuracy. What are you waiting for? All right, so erratic behavior back and forth through the same price level. We might like have like a very, very quick like move higher and then a move back down through resistance um, to create the June um, peak, which will be in that erratic behavior. And then in July, in the early part of July, we have a period of volatility and a fast sudden move higher ending that period of volatility. It looks like that fast sudden move higher is really a pop and drop 
taking us to a July high at an important technical price level of resistance. It'll be important on a multi-year scale there. Um, the July low is a notable decline that offers trade opportunity. I'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. And then we have prominent peaks around the cusp towards the end of July and around the cusp of July, uh, July August. Um, three pokes through the same price level in early August, followed by a sharp drop off of the third poke. Actually, it might not be the same price level. It's three pokes through the same resistance, followed by a sharp drop off of that third poke. Behavior around the August high, a decline to and through support to meet a second support. This is on a scale of a one-year chart, and we'll rotate sideways along that second support. Looks like that probably takes place towards the middle to end of the month where we're doing the rotating sideways because we've got this um, queen, which is sideways rotation, uh, queen of this sideways rotation along key support, and there's a sharp drop that stands out in that period of sideways rotation. A notable opportunity standing out when we look back at 2024, the opportunity at August low will really stand out, and we'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. Um, but there's a prominent trough after these prominent peaks around the cusp of July, August, in the early part of August, there's prominent troughs. A lot of price change between August into early September. Uh, another important resistance level on a one-year chart scale highlighted in early September and a lot of volatility and price change around it. A decline into the September low um, ends with a fast sudden move higher. And that fast sudden move higher, uh, it looks like takes place towards the later part of September. Uh, off of the September high, we have a notable decline, one of the larger declines of the year. Uh, might be bearish price turns with a sharp drop within it, but I think we, we probably have a brief peak that's easily missed there in September at the September high, um, which is probably towards the end, of, like the later part of September. In early October, we have a prominent move higher and a full retracement of that move back down. It'll make like a triangular kind of shape on a chart. Behavior around the October high, we have a period of sideways rotation that ends with a fast sudden move higher. Behavior around the later part of October, we have a crest that we sell off from down two and through support to meet us to do a U shape reversal below that support, come back and reuse it as support. Um, there's a universal hexagram correlation there as well. So we want to be very mindful of a sharp drop um, there towards the end of October. The October low forms when we successfully turn, we like move higher out of the low and successfully turn resistance into new support on a multi-day scale. An important crest like, looks like right around the cusp of October, November in the midst of a move higher. A lot of price change covered in early November in the midst of erratic, uh, in the midst of uh, increased volatility. The November high forms with a breakout on a one-year chart scale. November low forms when out of a de uh, out of like a scary technical chart pattern decline or in the face and or in the face of seemingly overwhelming headwinds. We still have a really big move higher out of the November low. That's what forms the low. Um, it looks like it's probably towards the later part of November after a near overbought crest that we sell off from in mid November. We go into a trough. Um, cross trading concurrencies there. I'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. And then out of that trough, we have a, a, a notable move higher, probably like a breakout of some kind. Uh, we do sideways rotation in early December around that price level. And then there's like this failed attempt around the December high to, to break through key resistance. That, and it looks like based on technicals that we would break through it. So everybody's expecting us to do that. Instead, we turn around, we decline through key support uh, off of the December high. Uh, notable opportunity in December's low and a lot of price change either into and or out of the December low. Let's take a look. Looks like a, a significant decline into the December low. Uh, trade opportunity there. I'll talk about it in more detail in the paid version. And then the Ace of Swords. Often the Ace of Swords indicates the highest high. Um, it doesn't mean it's the only high side. There's other cards here. Um, the Ace of Swords indicates a prominent peak at a key resistance on a multi-day scale uh, with a lot of price change moving into and or out of it. And then the sneak preview for 2025 is that we have a notable move higher, pushing the upper end of a multi-range higher. And that looks like it, it looks that way based on the 10-year, which I'll talk about in more detail in the paid version. That's the meta reading for 2024, my friends. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if this is new to you and you like this information. Please do so. It really helps out the channel to subscribe. Most importantly, though, make sure to follow that rule of karma, my friends. You know where to go. You know what to do. Blessings to all my angel investors. Stay tuned if you got the paid version.